So now we set up the ability to, when we start the game, we get a start timer countdown from 3, 2, 1. We can then begin to press our button and start to get a score. We're now ready to move on to the next step, the next feature within our game, and that is our game countdown. For how long we have now the ability to press and get the score, and once it reaches zero, to end the game. Now this works very similar to how we created the start countdown of the 3, 2, 1. We're just changing where it's now being displayed in terms of creating a brand new one and also then changing the function that it has when it ends. So back within our game view controller.swift, if we scroll back up to the top where we created these two brand new ints in the last lecture for our start int and our start timer, we're then going to repeat the process. We're going to create an additional variable, and this one is going to be our game int, and we're going to equal this to, uh, for example, let's go with 10, because our game timer is at 10. And then a secondary uh, variable now, and this one is going to be our game timer. And then we're going to simply equal this to our timer with our two brackets there. So again, we're basically repeating the process, we're just placing this secondary timer in a different place. So in the last lecture, then I'll just space out there so you can see the, the difference between the variables and outlets to where we begin our functions. If I scroll down, we set up our start int when the view loads and our start timer to be triggered again when the view loads. Our game one is going to trigger only again when our start timer has finished. So scroll down now to where we've got our start timer function here. If the start int equals equals zero, again, it invalidates the start timer and enables our button. What we then wanted to do at the same time is then trigger our game timer to start counting down from 10 all the way down to zero. But before we can do that, we need to create a function for us to allow us to do it. So we type in function our game and that our brackets there and our parentheses and press enter. And inside of it, this is pretty much going to do exactly the same. We're going to get our game int, and we're going to minus equals 1 every time we get called upon it. And what this is going to do then is display this within our time label. But we are yet to create the outlet for it. So what we need to do is jump into our main.storyboard. And then select the files owner of our game view here, and bring up our assistant editor. There we go, drag that over. So scroll to the top where we've got the rest of our outlets. And then we're going to drag and drop this label all the way over. And this is going to be our time uh, label. There we go. And add that in. Perfect. We've got that now all hooked up. So go back to our standard editor and then jump into our game view controller.swift. So if I scroll to the top, we've now got that new label in. So I can reference it down below. So it's called our time label. And uh, we can simply do dot text and equal the text attribute of our time label to our string and inside our string our game int and we close that up with a bracket. And again that's going to take away one every time we call upon that game function. So the only time we call upon that game function or trigger the game timer to start repeating itself is when our start timer has finished. And that is when if it equals zero. So after it's changed our button to tap me, it's invalidated our start timer, and then it's re-enabled our button for our user, we're then going to get our game timer to simply equal our timer dot schedule timer with time interval. We need the one to select that user info and repeats. In the time interval, we're going to make sure it repeats itself or triggers itself every one second. Uh, then in the uh, target, we're going to do simply self. The selector, we do hash selector. And inside the two brackets here, we then type in the class of which our function is appearing in, which is uh, game view controller. Then we do dot and the name of our function statement, which is called game. And have a bracket there. See, it's called game down below. User info, we're going to do nil. And repeat, we're going to simply set to true because, again, obviously, we want it to keep repeating until we tell it to basically stop. So before we go any further, then, we're going to quickly scroll to the top. 
Now within our view did load, we simply set our star int to equal three, and then we get it to trigger. At the same time, we're also, after all that, gonna get our game int to equal 10. Now, although we do have this set up uh, as the variable is what it equals to anyway, and what we have the label already equal to within our interface, we're just gonna make sure that in the uh, view did load that it is currently equal in it. And uh, oh, we get rid of that bracket there, and we get our time label dot text to simply equal a string of our game int. But it's again, we're just making sure that we sell it in stone, uh, that it does equal this as soon as the view loads up. No questions asked, it doesn't matter what we did in the interface, uh, what we made those variables, um, variables equal to at the start, it's gonna equal that, it's gonna display that as soon as the view loads up. So back down here then, we're now gonna go to build and run. We're gonna test it out to see what we've currently got at the start. So again, our game timer should only trigger as soon as the countdown has gone three, two, one, zero, as soon as it hits zero, you'll now see changes the text in our button, re-enables the button, and then begins the countdown in our time remaining. How cool is that? So we can tap away, and even though we haven't got it set up yet, but we're gonna set it up now for when it reaches zero, it invalidates the timer, and then it disables our tap me button, so our user can no longer get any score and it gets ready to be displayed at the end screen. So back within the function then, we're gonna create a brand new if statement, again, just like how we've done within the start game timer. And we're gonna do if our game int is equal equal to the value of zero, so once it reaches zero, what's gonna happen? Well, the first thing is, we're gonna get our game timer and dot, Invalidate. We're going to cancel it, stop it from repeating. We don't want it to go any further. So once it's done that, then we're going to get our button dot is enabled, and we're going to equal that to false. And just those two simple lines there is what we need to stop the time from going down and our user from interacting with the tap me button any further. So let's go to build and run then. Let's double check, let's make sure 100% the game timer stops at zero and it disables our button. So then, we're gonna go to start game. Again, I'm clicking, we can't press it, we can't get any score just yet. But once the um, time it reaches zero, begins our time game timer, I can then start to get score, and I'll keep pressing until we hit zero and bam. It's disabled the button, I'm clicking, nothing's happening. I've now been given a score. I managed to press the button 25 times within 10 seconds. That is my score. And then I'm ready to either share the score or to simply go play again and see if I can beat my high score because we'll have this save on our home screen. But all that stuff is to do in coming lectures. In the next lecture, we're going to set up our end game screen, get all the interface designed, all the buttons set up, add all the corner radiuses to make sure we have a universal kind of interface going through throughout the project. Uh, before we then set up the ability to, once we've got that score, in my case is 25, that gets pushed over to our end screen and displayed, ready for us to share via Twitter, email, or uh, M uh, SMS, like text message, uh, or even then have the ability to restart the game in general, and then set up the ability to save the current high score in the game. So it's different every time we play it, uh, make sure we got kind of like a task to beat it, that then adds some form of replay value to our game.